This is the new commercial vehicle version of the Suzuki Jimny, and it's a little bit like eating sushi, but without the wasabi. You know, all the essential ingredients are there, and it's nice enough, just lacks that little extra kick. Now, in this video, I'm going to talk you through how this is different to the normal passenger car version of the Jimny, both on the outside and on the inside. I'm going to tell you what's good about it, what's not good about it, and of course, I'm going to drive it. I'm even going to launch it to see how quick it is from 0 to 60 miles an hour. Anyway, I'm Matt Watson, and you're watching Car Wow. And if you enjoy these sort of videos, please make sure you subscribe to this channel and hit the bell icon to turn your notifications on. That way, you're not going to miss any uploads. Buying a new car? Then head to CarWow, and my team will help you find your next car at a fair price. CarWow, your one-stop car buying comparison site. Let's start this video by talking about the design of the commercial vehicle version of the Suzuki Jimny. So it's based on the entry-level passenger car version, the SZ4. You get the same kit on it. You can get it in the same colour, so it's not just in this white. You can get it in black. You can get it in a yellow, blue, and silver. But you can't get the stuff that you got on the high-level SZ5. So no LED headlights, just halogens. That's your lot. No alloy wheels, just steelies. No body-coloured door mirrors or hand doors. They're just black plastic. Same at the back as well. Now, I know a lot of motoring journalists say, well, you know what, the most basic version of the Suzuki Jimny was always the coolest, you know, look, it's just more utilitarian. That's nonsense. They didn't buy one. I bought a Suzuki Jimny and I bought the higher spec SZ5 because you want them on cons if you're driving it every day. Now, if you want to see my own Suzuki Jimny, I've done a video on it. Click on the pop-out banner up there, follow the link in the description below to go watch that. Before we go any further, we need to talk about the price because it's a little bit controversial. When the Mark IV version of the Suzuki Jimny first went on sale in 2018, the basic entry-level version cost from £15,500. Now, that car has pretty much the same spec as this car, yet this starts from £17,000, and that's if you buy it through your business and you're VAT registered. If you're not VAT registered or you're buying it as a private individual, it's going to cost you from £20,000, which is rather a lot. However, if you go online and search for new Suzuki Jimnys, you'll find that some are actually fetching over £30,000. In fact, if you've got a Suzuki Jimny you want to make some profit on, or maybe you're just trying to sell your car and you want to make sure you get a good price for it, you can go to CarWow and sell your car and get dealers bidding on your car. Now, to do that, you can click on the pop-out banner in the top right-hand corner of the screen or follow the link in the description below. Alternatively, if you want to do it after this video, simply Google Help Me Car Wow and do it that way instead. Here on the inside, apart from that cage there, the interior design is the same as an entry-level SZ4 passenger car version of the Jimny. So materials are a little bit cheap and scratchy. You do have a grab handle there for your passenger when you're off-roading. The steering wheel is rubberized rather than leather like in my SZ5 Jimny. Same story with the gear knob as well. The layout's pretty simple. It's all kind of chunky, quite nice, quite cute, quite lovable. However, you've got the same speedo, which I find just hard to read. And it's really odd that in the digital display, you don't actually get the speedo there. It just gives you your average speed over however long you've been driving the car. Weird. It's not the most practical either. So the door bins are really, really narrow. The glove box, look at this. It's, it's an okay size, but it just flops down onto the passenger's knees. You've got your USB port there and your 12 volt socket. And you think, oh, that tray's going to be perfect for my mobile phone, but pretty much every modern mobile phone won't quite fit in there. It will constantly fall out and go underneath your clutch, brake or accelerator pedal. And the cup holders are back here. So when you're driving along, you're having to do a little bit of a reach around to get them. One of the bonuses of this van version of the Jimny is that you can carry quite a lot in it. The boot capacity is 836 litres. Reason being, you can actually load it right to the roof because you've got that cage there, so you don't have to worry about if you suddenly break all your stuff coming flying through into the driving compartment. Now, another thing that's good about it is this. Everything's nice and wide, so you can fit big items in there. And because it's a square shape, you can actually load it up full of boxes. What you can't do, though, is carry any rear passengers. Bit annoying. In fact, that brings me on to five other annoying things about this Jimny. You'd think that being a commercial vehicle, this would be quite tough, but there's something a bit flimsy about this Jimny. Look at this. When I shut the door, the air pressure change will actually cause the roof to wobble. Watch this. See that? <laughs> this car is rather uncomfortable, all thanks to this cage. You see, you have two options. One is you can sit so far forward that your knees are just bashing off the dash, but that does allow you to recline the seat back. Or you can have comfy knees and uncomfortable back. Great. With a normal commercial vehicle, the back windows are blacked out, but here on this Jimny, no. So people can peer in and see exactly what you're carrying about with you. 
Seeing as this commercial vehicle version of the Jimny is basically a, a cheat for them to get around the emissions regs so that people who want to buy a Jimny in the first place and could never get one can now have one. It's a shame they haven't fitted it with some more kit. For instance, you can't get the bigger infotainment screen with Android Auto or Apple CarPlay. You don't get the climate control, you just get air conditioning. And there's no heated seats either. There is no spec available on this car at all. It's a bit miserable. Why they did that? They could have just made it available. Considering this is supposed to be a commercial vehicle, you can't really carry that much in it. The payload is just 150 kilograms. In comparison, the payload of a Toyota Hilux pickup is 1,000 kilos. And if you want to see my full in-depth video review of that truck, click on the pop-out banner up there or for the link in the description. Thankfully though, it's not all bad. Here's five cool things about this commercial vehicle version of the Suzuki Jimny. Most modern small vans are front-wheel drive only, whereas this Suzuki Jimny has a switchable four-wheel drive system and a low range mode, so it can go proper off-road. So you can deliver your goods from the depths of winter to the hilliest hill in hilly Wales. Being a commercial vehicle means that if you buy this Suzuki Jimny through your business, you don't have to pay VAT on it. It's good, that. Look at this, we've got a big back window and no bulkhead, which means that you can actually see at the back quite easily, which you usually can't do with many other commercial vehicles. Are your feet filthy? Well, if you're worried about treading sheep all over the interior of your gym, you don't want to look, you've got a rubberized mat, so you can just wash it off quite easily. Let's be honest, not that many people would want a commercial vehicle version of the Suzuki Jimny. However, we should be thankful that it exists. You see, Suzuki had to axe the normal passenger car version of the Jimny because its emissions were too high that they faced fines. But this way, people who didn't get a normal Jimny can still enjoy the Jimny experience, sort of, just in a slightly less enjoyable format. Underneath the bonnet is the same 1.5 litre petrol engine you get in the normal Suzuki Jimny. It pumps out the same colossal 101 horsepower and 130 newton metres of torque. And it drives the rear wheels under normal driving conditions via a five-speed manual gearbox. I'm going to launch it soon to see how quick it is. It's going to be so rapid. All right, let's see what this commercial vehicle version of the Jimny is like to drive. Well, it's identical to the normal Jimny. And I'm pretty familiar with the car, obviously owning one. I think the Jimny is brilliant to drive in town. I really do because you sit up high, you get a good view out. It's very short, very narrow. So it's easy to squeeze through gaps in traffic and it's easy to park as well. The controls are pretty nice, so the steering's light and it's reasonably accurate at lower speeds. The gear shift on it, oh, it's actually got quite a notchy gear change, but it's quite short and precise and the pedals are all nice and light as well and the brakes they're not jerky or grabby the car doesn't dive too much under braking so it's all pretty easy to drive about one thing you do notice though is the fact that it's got a ladder frame chassis and rigid axles bumps do send a shimmy through the car when you're going slowly it doesn't really matter too much you get shaken a touch but it's not enough to put you off it and the positives far outweigh the negatives when you're just tootling around at lower speeds. Another thing about it is it's got a good turning circle, being so short. It actually has a turning circle of under 10 meters, which is reasonable. It means that if you come to a mini roundabout like I'm approaching now and you need to go around it a couple of times because you're not entirely sure where to go because you haven't got sat in your car because reasons for vans and blah, you can go round and round until you find your way, look. And if you do get it wrong and need to go over a curb, of course, You've got that jacked up suspension, so it's all absolutely fine. And you won't really worry about damaging alloy wheels in this particular one because you haven't got any, have you? They're steels. Where the Jimny isn't so good is when you start going a little bit faster. So on the motorway, because you've only got five gears and quite a puny engine, doing around 70 miles an hour, it's revving between three and 4,000 RPM. And because there's hardly any sound insulation in here, you just hear like, Mah! it really is pretty tiring. And then when you're on the motorway, go past a lorry, or if there's any side winds, this car just weaves about all over the place, so you're constantly having to correct the steering. When you get on a twisty road, one that's a little bit bumpy like this is now, you really do notice that as you're going faster, the body really shakes and gets bounced about all over the place. And that means that you don't drive it too quickly because you could end up hitting a bump and skipping off into a hedge. Also, it does lean a bit in the corners. It does. The steering, while good in town because it's nice and light, is now just very, very slow and unresponsive. It's not totally awful like some off-roaders. You don't have to keep correcting it, but it is just a bit lifeless. And if you suddenly need to make it an evasive manoeuvre, you can't. And this car will probably tip over anyway. In fact, when I did that, 
<laughs> the stability control completely itself and I could feel it breaking the car as it was going, what the bloody are you trying to do to me? However, the slow steering, the rigid axles, the ladder frame chassis stuff, they all pay off when you go off-road. So let's do some off-roading. Here we are then, some extreme conditions not. Do you know what? I've never taken my gym in anything as extreme as this. It's not even been off-road mine. And I'm running this one in rear wheel drive mode and it'll still make it over this. Most people buy gymnasts for fashion anyway. They do nowadays, that's why they all sold out. Anyhow, if I put this into four wheel drive and low range mode, this thing is super capable. I've actually had it in a quarry. I've taken it up some slippery steps. I've taken it down like a rock walk. I've taken it on an axle twister. I've even blasted it through this little course where it really showed off its durability and maneuverability. It's mental off-road, this thing. Anyway, that's enough of that. Let's do what I actually came here for. You see, I am on an airstrip. I'm gonna launch the chimney. So, specialist timing gear is here. Let's activate that. Let's launch it, here we go. Got at the revs. Oh, listen to that engine sing. What should that be, scream? 60 in 12.62 seconds. What's the quarter mile gonna be? Come on, Jim. 18.81. Oh, who cares? It's not about going faster than this car. It's got so much personality. It's just great in a weird way. I love it. It's, it is slow though, isn't it? It's slow. It's good around town, but when you try to overtake anyone, oh, unless they're on a bicycle. So then what's my final verdict on this commercial vehicle version of the Suzuki Jimny? Should you avoid it? Should you consider it? Should you shortlist it? Or should you just go right ahead and buy it? Well, I think most people should avoid it because yeah, it's fairly rubbish on road and there's no creature comforts on this van based version nor any back seats at all. However, if you miss the Mark IV Jimny the first time round, this is your only way to get a new one. And even though it is more expensive than the original car was back in 2018, it's cheaper than buying a used Suzuki Jimny because they're fetching over list now. So yeah, do whatever you want. I mean, I'm a bit biased though because I own a Suzuki Jimny, so I love them. Anyway, I hope you all enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a like. If you didn't, swallow your own tongue. Let me know what you think of this van-based version of the Jimny in the comments below. Click on those windows there for some more videos and on that box there for a special surprise.